and welcome to this week's video. So I know I've been promising videos for quite a long time now. Here we are, new studio, uh, everything set up, ready to go, and I've got so much planned for you guys. The first thing I promised was a string changing video. So um, I've been lucky enough to be sent a pack of innovation strings. Uh, these are Rockabilly Blacks, so I'm really, really excited to test them out. But before I test them out, I need to put them on my base. So I thought it'd be a pretty good opportunity to uh, show you guys how to do the same thing. It's not too difficult. Uh, you're going to need a few things. So you get your string winder. Make sure you get one for double base. Obviously going to need your strings. Probably need a cleaning cloth. You're going to need a pencil. An old tea towel or a rag or something like that. And you may need a couple of cushions. So I'm using the floor to do this for a number of reasons. It's a good setting in here. I don't really have much other space to do it in. And, and I'm here mainly to show you guys what to do rather than for ease of access today. So um, if I was doing it myself normally, I might use a bed or a table. If I'm gonna use a table, I'll probably put a couple of cushions underneath um, just to protect the base. Um, with a bed, much easier, it's already comfortable. Um, if you wanna put it on a bed or a table, you wanna hang it so you lay the base body on the table and the table edge comes up to about here. And then you leave the rest of the neck hanging over the edge. Uh, it's gonna be much easier when you're winding the strings on later on. So we're using a couple of cushions just to raise it up off the floor. It gives me some uh, space to wind the strings and also protects the body of the base from shuffling around and getting scratched. So before we jump straight in, we're gonna take a look at what's going on in here. Okay, so you can see that this is where your strings are wound on. Now, I wanna make a couple of points here. So the first point for me is that I've got a three quarter size base and the strings that I'm using are for a full size base. So the material that wraps here is not quite long enough. I did contact the company and they recommended I didn't use these on a three quarter base, but they've been on here for probably six years and they've been absolutely fantastic. So it's not a problem. The other thing I wanted to point out is the way the strings cross over. So you can see that with this, G string comes up, it crosses and goes onto here. That was actually my very first attempt at putting on my own double bass strings, believe it or not, uh, and, and not a very good one at that. I've since learnt how to do it properly, um, and I'm gonna show you. So this is not something you really want. So I'm just taking a look at this bass. Um, the way basses are strung up is a little bit different on certain basses. So for me, the lowest string is on the lowest machine head. The next one up is actually the G string. So what it does, it goes round in order like this. So you've got the E string, the A string, the D string, and the G string. And that does affect the order of which I'm gonna replace them. So for me, I'm going to replace the E first. And what you do, because I don't know if a lot of you know, but the bridge itself, I mean, most, most seasoned bass players are probably gonna know this, but the bridge is not actually attached to your bass. They're just wedged in place by the pressure of the strings. So the pressure of the strings holds it in place and just forces it onto the body, which is where the great sound comes from because it helps the, the sound transfer through the wood into the body of the bass and it gives you a lovely rich sound. There's also the sound post in this setup as well. So inside your bass, you'll have a dowel, which is probably about this long. It's the length of the, the body of the bass. Um, and it goes from the back to the front. And again, that is wedged in place by the pressure of the strings. So because of these tensions, we don't want to go, let's take all the strings off and then start again because two things will happen. Definitely your bridge will fall over, which is not great. Uh, and probably your sound post might fall over, which is a big problem. Trying to get one of them back in place is like, oh my God, absolute nightmare. I've got a sound post setter and even with one of those, it's horrible. So you want to avoid that if you can. So we're going to keep the pressure on at all times by replacing one string at once. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my strings and uh, see what we've got inside. So we've got a G string, first string, D, A, and then one I'm wanting, the E. So I'm gonna grab the E string and take a look at what I've got. Uh, some of your strings will come, this one doesn't, with a little felt pad, a little felt circular pad. Um, and that pad, you just thread down the string right onto the bottom and it just sits underneath. My old strings have one, so what I might do is reuse them. 
onto these. So let's unravel the string. It's got a nice long piece here that's for attaching it to the machine head. And then we'll put the string. Okay. So I'm going to stick that down on the floor over there. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here before I change this first string is I'm going to use the tea towel that I prepared earlier and I'm going to pop it just under here. Uh, two reasons. When I take all my sound equipment off, it's somewhere to put it without scratching my base or having to unplug too much. Um, and also, when the strings are coming through, they might whip back and just clip the bass. So if you've got a really lovely bass that's not a bit of a work horse like mine, um, you might want to be a little bit careful of that so the tea towel can protect it. So we're going to take off that E string. So I'm going to grab my winder, and if you take a look, it's got a nice big gap, and it gets smaller and smaller as it goes down. So I'm going to push it on here, because if it's loose, it's going to be hard to wind. So make sure you wind it in the right direction, obviously, because if you wind it in the wrong direction, it's going to get tighter and possibly snap. And um, this is a good time to also pay attention to which way your string is wrapped on. Now, it is really obvious, it goes over the top. But if you just remember which way you're winding means when you're putting your string back on, it'll be going the opposite direction. Pull that out. So once you've got your string out, unhook it from your bridge, and thread it back through the tailpiece. Okay. So this is the little felt pad I was talking about. I am going to keep my old strings because my rotor sounds are my favourites, so they will get tidied up and stored lovingly very soon. Okay, so I'm going to pop that on there. Now I'm ready to pop on my first new string. So I like I like the thickness of these; they're looking pretty good. So it's going to be so exciting to try them out. Now this, you'll notice, has a much longer piece to wind on, um, which is really good because. It means that with the size of my base, I probably won't be winding string on, but I'll be winding the, the bit you're supposed to wind onto the machine head. That's pulled nicely through. So now I've got my string through my tailpiece, I'm going to do something you might think is a little bit weird. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go to my bridge here and I'm going to colour in and I'm going to do the same on this notch. Now what this does is when I'm tightening the string, so the string will be laying on the bridge and up here on the top of the fingerboard and it just allows as I'm tightening it for the string to slide a little easier. So now we're going to start winding on here. So we're going to thread it through this hole. As you can see, I'm going to bring it out the other side just a little way. We're never going to cut the string, that's the main thing. You don't want to do that because it can damage your string um, and that's just a bad idea. So we're going to make sure we wrap it on here. So I'm going to start winding it on in the opposite direction to how I wound it off. My first one, I don't want to pull it too tight because it might pop out of the hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this string starts winding to this side of where the hole comes out, okay, to start with. Because what I want it to end up doing is I want the string to finish where it lines up here. And I've got a lot of string that I need to wind on. So I'm going to start it winding that way. So I'm going to use my little bit of tension here, just push it over that way and then continue winding. So it starts to go off in that direction. So I'm going to be honest, we had some camera issues, uh, new studio, new equipment, new everything. It decided it was going to switch itself off. So we've missed a couple of strings here, but I'm going to fill you in in all the details of what I did. You haven't actually missed anything. So the first thing I did was I got that E string completely on. Um, I saw the winding, so I started winding away from the E string, crossed it back over, which helps tighten that string down and also gives the right line up. So it lines the E string correctly, nice and down to where the groove is, because you don't want it crossing from say over here coming down to here. I'm going to make it nice and straight. And we've also done the same with the A string. So we did the A string second. So the A string, we use the pencil, don't forget. And we put the felt from the other set of strings I have. And again, we wound this way first, but with the A string, 
because the A string is the second string in, we did a lot more winding going this way first. So we made about five loops and then came back across and that then joins down nicely onto the bridge. A couple of the tips, when we've got this flappy string down here, like this, it can hook over here, or it can hook around the bridge, or it can get tangled in things, and you don't want that. So as you're winding, make sure you're keeping an eye on where your string is. Another little tip is to keep the cases. So as you take a string off, if you've got, like me, you've got strings that you want to keep because they're great strings, you can just make sure you go, oh, that's my G string, I'm going to put it in the G string case. That's my D string, I'm going to put it in the D string case. And then you know which is which when you come back to it. So we're now working on this G string. So I've started winding it on here because the G string isn't the very top machine head. The G string is this one here. So mine go round like this, E, A, D, G. So the G needs to come before the D. So what I've done is I've threaded it on, started winding it as usual. This time, obviously it's going to go towards the middle away. So it's the opposite direction. So we don't want it going towards this outside first, so we're going to wind it to my left, as it were, if I'm looking at the base that way. And then it's going to come back across and line up again here. We've used the pencil, we've coloured in the little slots, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going with what we've established is the worst, well maybe not the world's worst string winder, but it's definitely competing. Um, get a good, as many as we can, rolls in that direction. But because the A string's in the way, we might not get too many. As you can see here, we've wound just up to that A string, and then we've crossed over, and now we're coming back here to get it all lined up. So what I've done is I've tucked it under the A string to start with. So it was, it should be, and it will live on this side of the A string. But I've tucked it underneath it to start winding um, because all of it wants to be to the left of the A and the A was getting in the way. So I've tucked it under and I'm going to keep it that side until we get closer to the outside around here. So at this point, I'm going to switch it back. I'm going to bring the A string so it sits on top. You can always loosen it a little bit more if it's too tight. I'm going to make sure my G-string is sitting in its little pocket. Hold it nicely there and continue winding until it's nice and tight. And sounding something like a G. Let's switch our tune up. If anybody does know any better mix of string winders, please drop me a link in the comments because this one is dire. Um, also, where I've pushed it on, it has chipped away a little bit of the um, metal coating on one of the machine heads. So it's just, I would not recommend it to anyone. I'm not amazingly impressed. That's close to a G. So you don't want to worry about it being exact because as you do it, so I've tuned, I'll pop that A string back over. I've tuned my E and my A, sorry, the D string, and the E, who knows what that is now. Uh, the A's still around, an A. The E's not. There it is, E. I think my tuner needs to get used to my strings because that's not. Boom, 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 boom. Mm, something around there. See so that G's done out of tune already. And you will find that, you'll find for the next 10 days or so, especially if you're using a nylon core like these are, I believe they're a nylon core, um, but not a steel core or a metal core of any kind, your tuning is going to go out, especially slap style wise, um, probably for the next 10 days and every five minutes you're going to be retuning it and getting it to settle. That is perfectly normal because the strings stretch and settle into place. So you've got a period of breaking them in. So do not change strings right before a gig. That would be a terrible idea. I mean, unless you absolutely have to, but it's very rare that double bass strings 
um, will snap. I'm liking the look of these strings so far. They're nice. The best factor for me at this moment is how pretty the colours are on the tuning head look. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm really excited to see what the other ones are. I kind of wish all these down here were different colours as well. But yeah, yellow works with my base. Now I'm finding there's a really interesting noise coming from here and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. So I filmed a video on the beach not so long ago and oh, there's a horrible grinding noise and I think it's got sand in. <sighs> ah. What colour is it going to be? Oh, yellow. Okay. We've got yellow and yellow. I was kind of hoping for something a bit more exciting than yellow, but still, innovation is still winning with this whole cool little um, colour thing. I do love that the strings are black as well. That is, um, it's just kind of epic. I like black. It's a good colour. So don't forget to make sure you're checking the packets. It says D. That means it's the correct string. Unless I was doing the inner string, and then it wouldn't be. So we're gonna put the felt. Slide it on. I'm going to slide it through the bottom. Not nice and tight. Trusty pencil. A bit of colouring in. Like that. Okay. Get the whole pointing upwards. Feed it through. Start winding. Remember, double check that you're going the correct direction and think about where you're wanting it to end up. So this one I'm wanting to end here, which means I'm going to to the inside first. Now, as you can see here, I don't have that much of an inside, um, but because the string is the highest one, hopefully I won't need that much. Um, but we'll just assess this as we go along to see if I need to move it anywhere to get it to line up here. Okay, so we've got this far, we're now going to cross it back over this way and then see where we go with everything else. Don't forget to keep checking down this end to see what it's doing and it's not getting caught on anything because you don't want to pull anything out of whack. gone out of tune again so now at this point I'm going to check my bridge so to make sure my bridge is in the right place you want to be checking how it's sitting on the base here so if you can see any little gaps I want to take the tea towel off now because we don't need it so if you can see any little gaps underneath the wood at all then you need to adjust your bridge excuse the dirt on my base um, so there shouldn't be any bridge, uh, gaps, it should be nice and upright and it should be on the markings where it's been originally set or where you've just used your pencil markings. That's looking pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the tuning right. So actually that's now dropped to an F. This is probably going to be the way I'm next spending my next week as so. well. I like to give them a little pull. Especially because I'm doing slap style. Just give them a pull, it helps them settle a little bit better. Oh, there's a creak. Okay, and I'm gonna <laughs> start again with the tuning. If you're playing slap style, you know, it, it can actually help them settle well because you're pulling your strings around, you're giving them that elasticity that they may not get. Um, if you're not slap style, it's not a problem um, because you won't actually be pulling them around ever, so they'll settle in their own way, they'll settle to your playing style. And there you have it, a full set of chain strings with a very, very beautiful looking head, I like. So now you can change your set of strings. So I want to give a quick shout out firstly to all my patrons, all my supporters, all you guys watching the videos. Um, 
everyone who's signed up at Patreon, you guys have made this studio. This is yours. It is epic and it means that I can now bring you a lot more content um, in a much easier fashion. I want to make a big shout out to uh, David Chandler, um, Ian Brown, Donna Crane and Dave Hogarth. They're my awesome subscribers. You guys have been brilliant. Um, everybody in the patrons only Facebook group, we're getting a wicked interaction going on there. Loving to see your guys' videos and see you supporting each other. That is absolutely epic. Um, we've also got our live Q&As, which have started. We did the first one this week, which was a massive flop. <laughs> um, it's a work in progress. So all of these benefits um, and a lot more, like uh, merchandise, shout outs, uh, fan requests, so you can request what videos we cover next, um, and all that kind of stuff can be found on my Patreon site. So it's patreon.com slash thebasepixie, and you can find the link below. If you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful, give me a thumbs up down there and also click subscribe. We're going to have a lot more videos coming along. Um, the tutorials can be found um, in order on one of my Patreon sites. Um, and depending on what you're wanting, you can go different tiers, different levels. So keep rocking, guys, and uh, keep practicing. Mm -hmm.